Tomo News presents Service Animals. A blind man who miraculously survived after tumbling onto New York City subway tracks earlier this week has credited his guide dog with saving his life. Cecil Williams was on his way to visit the dentist when he suddenly began to feel faint. Noticing this, his guide dog Orlando began to bark frantically and tried to prop the 61-year-old up. I saw a man, a little wobbly, but he was too close to the edge. I tried to scream at him to get, you know, forward. The dog was pulling him to, to come forward, and, but it was too late. He, he wobbled forward and then he went backwards. Medication Williams was taking at the time may have been to blame for his fainting. The loyal black lab then jumped down onto the tracks and attempted to wake up his owner as a subway train hurtled toward them. Luckily, the two were lying in a trough between the rail tracks and escaped serious injury. Williams' insurance is set to expire when he retires in January, and he may be forced to give Orlando up for adoption. But well-wishers have been working hard in an attempt to stop the pair from being separated. And as of Thursday, a campaign on crowdfunding platform Indiegogo has racked up more than $60,000 in donations. Hit the link in the description below to see how you can help. Photo of woman's emotional support duck goes viral online. Bet you never thought a duck could fly this high. On October 16th, a man flying from Milwaukee to Asheville, North Carolina, happened to notice a peculiar looking passenger waddling onto the plane and tweeted out a picture that's thrown the internet into a frenzy. Affectionately named Daniel Turducken Stinkerbutt by his owner, the duck gets to go pretty much anywhere she goes as he's legally certified as an emotional support animal. Daniel's owner, Carla Fitzgerald, used to drive a horse-drawn carriage when a car slammed into her from behind and sent her flying. Four years later, she still suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. The duck supposedly senses when she's stressed and nuzzles her to reduce her anxiety. Daniel not only flies with Fitzgerald, he also goes to movies and church, always on a leash and wearing a diaper. The only requirements to have a pet certified as an emotional support animal are that the owner is considered emotionally disabled by a licensed mental health professional and that the animal is manageable in public. In the United States, animals are allowed to accompany their owners in the airplane cabin at no extra cost as long as they are needed for support reasons. Typical domestic animals like cats, dogs, mice, rabbits, birds, rats, small pigs, and ferrets can be certified to fly. But cases of more unusual creatures have also been reported as emotional support animals, such as turkeys, turtles, snakes, llamas, and hedgehogs. Animals of the world rejoice! As long as there are humans in need of emotional therapy, the skies are your oyster. This show wasn't for the dogs. Chaos erupted at a performance of Cats on Broadway after a canine audience member got triggered by one particularly feisty feline. Humans dressed as cats who sing and dance for two hours may be a hit for most people, but man's best friend apparently doesn't like it. At one recent performance, a service dog got away from its owner and sprinted toward the stage during the opening number. Sorry, Andrew Lloyd Webber. The animal was particularly unhappy with the show's flirtatious female, Bomba Lurina, and caused a ruckus on stage when he began chasing after her. Fortunately, an usher managed to grab the dog before it caused any real trouble and returned it to its owner. But while the production company seemed to have laughed the encounter off, people online were genuinely pissed. Netizens think the service dog was fake, pointing out that a legit one wouldn't have acted that way. Then again, the pup could still be in training, and well, it probably failed. Enough with these phony service pets on a plane. Anyone who's been frequently flying the friendly skies this past year has probably noticed the passenger cabin has started looking more and more like a zoo. With the sudden proliferation of service dogs and emotional support animals. By law, service and pet therapy animals fly for free. And are the a-holes who are ruining it for everyone else because they're too cheap to pay to bring their pets on the play. <laughs> service animal vests or tags can now easily be purchased online for varying prices. 
And with cases of emotional support animals, all a passenger has to do is show a letter from a mental health professional saying that they need the animal for air travel. The problem is, counterfeit letters can also be bought online for less than a hundred bucks. Blind people and others with actual disabilities have fought hard to get public access for their dogs and service animals. If you're too cheap to pay for your pet to fly, rather than screwing over people that actually need their service animals, why not take a road trip instead? Jerk bothers an on-duty guide dog causing its blind owner to fall off a subway platform. Guide dogs might be are cute, but don't bother them when they're on duty. A seeing eye dog named Duo Duo was helping his visually impaired owner in the subway station in Taipei City, Taiwan. It was rush hour and the platform was crowded. A few people noticed Duo Duo and started petting him. Oh, so cute, they cooled. But soon after, as Duo Duo was leading his owner to a platform after going up an escalator, some dumbass startled the dog by stamping his feet loudly and yelling, Hey, I'm trying to walk here. Duo Duo became frightened and led the visually impaired woman to the edge of the platform. The woman took a step backwards and fell onto the rails. She was quickly assisted back to the platform, and luckily, she only suffered a minor wrist injury. Duodo's owner says she knows the dog does his best to protect her, but she said too many people try to play with them and the distractions can be problematic. The Taiwan Guide Dog Association notes that should you see guide dogs, do not feed or do anything to distract the dog. Seeing eye dog given his own commencement ceremony. Meet Tashi, he's a nine-year-old seeing eye dog. Tashi has been helping Ms. Zhang Yahui for the last seven years as a seeing eye dog and has become quite the star at National Taiwan University of Science and Technology, where Ms. Zhang works. Eleven years ago, Ms. Zhang was blinded during an experiment while she was a graduate student studying at the university. She had to undergo several surgeries and doctors were unable to save her eyes. Seven years ago, Tashi became Ms. Zhang's constant companion after the two met, but now Tashi is getting on in years, and Ms. Zhang has decided he needs to retire. Ms. Zhang says that Tashi has not only guided her through the streets of Taipei, but he's also guided her in her lonely hours and through depression. She was surprised and pleased by the graduation ceremony for Tashi, also by the number of students, professors, and staff who turned up to say goodbye to Tashi. Ms. Zhang says she imagines Tashi will miss all the attention when he goes into retirement with her parents, who live in Taizong, but he's earned his rest. Ms. Zhang says she won't be getting another seeing eye dog and she's going to try and navigate her world on her own. Idiots distract seeing eye dog, woman falls into subway tracks. Seeing eye dogs are still a rarity in most Asian countries, and with the lack of dogs comes the lack of awareness. When meeting a seeing eye dog, it is important to remember that these dogs are working and should not be distracted. A blind woman in northern Taiwan was attempting to take the subway with her seeing eye dog, a Labrador named Toto but strangers continually stopped them to pet Dodo. When the woman and Dodo had finally arrived on the subway platform, one idiot stood in front of the dog and stomped. Dodo instinctively moved to avoid the street dancing failure, but accidentally dumped his owner onto the tracks of the subway. Other bystanders helped the woman back onto the platform. Luckily, she'd only suffered a sprained wrist. But she wants people to understand that when meeting a seeing eye dog, people should not touch or feed the dog without the handler's permission. Even when offering assistance, people should speak to the person, not the dog. You'd think it'd be common sense.